Hey, Teresa, how are you? Good. This is so hard to not be in the same room with you. I know. We're typically joined at the hip doing these things, but um, we're going to do our best for you today. So the, uh, did you want to start with a fun fact? I liked that. Hmm. Fun fact. There are so many. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'll start. I have a, um, uh, unbeknownst to uh, a lot of you, I, I was voted back, you know, back in high school, I was the class clown. <laughs> and we had that uh, tradition actually has existed in my family for three generations now. So we'll see if uh, one of my kids actually ends up bringing that along. And then I was, I was also an award winner. I got the Color Me Fun Award from the RCWT. So I, there's a bit of a theme there. So I'm not the traditional type speaker if you haven't seen me present before, but we'll go there. Anyway, Teresa, what you got? Oh, geez, my fun fact. I don't know if most people would think it's fun, but I run for fun. I've run lots of marathons. Um, I think that's my, my little way of getting away and, and having some personal space, which we'll talk a little bit about today. But I've run lots of marathons. I've actually run out of keeping track of them. So <laughs> right, half marathons, full marathons, you name it, I do it. Great, great. Well, today, actually, it was kind of funny listening to John this morning. I'm texting Teresa on the side saying, huh, looks like we're bookending along with the same type of theme that, that John brought. Um, a lot of the same concepts are going to be delivered here. So we won't, we won't uh, elaborate a ton on some of these things, but we do want to kind of just remind you the importance and talk about building that culture of resiliency from the frontline supervisor's perspective. I, I want to make note real quick that the majority of the information from today's presentation is adapted from the Cornell Health article on building resilience. And what's really interesting is the article happened long before uh, the pandemic came about, and yet so many of these things are so uh, pertinent to what we're going through right now and, and things that we can do to help us through it. So I want to start with a quick question of how would you define resiliency? What would you say resiliency means? So if everybody could kind of throw up a couple things in the chat box there, how, what would you say is resiliency? Qualities of resiliency. Bravery, we've got bravery. Cool. Thick skin, Just being able to adapt to change, being tough. Love it. Able to bounce back. Ah, yeah. All, all great, great definitions. Good, good definitions. Um, what I got for you here, again, I like John, I went to Webster. And Webster says, resiliency is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties or toughness. You guys nailed it. You got this. Well, let's just end it here. They got it, right? Um, and I really liked this, uh, the meme that I found. Uh, this is the, bam the bamboo that bends is stronger than the oak that resists. And I think that we're all bending quite a bit, right? Look at this, Frontline Supervisor Virtual Conference. How much more bending can you get, right? Um, we have to remember that, re you know, resilience is not a fixed state. It does change over time. And there's some times that we're stronger and can bend easier than other times, right? Um, it can be learned, it can be practiced, it can be developed. And sometimes uh, we don't know how strong we can be or how tough or flexible we can be until we're forced to do it. And I think we've all experienced a little bit of that now. Um, but here we are, and we need to continue to foster that, that culture of resiliency because I think, I think we're gonna be in a, in a kind of a shifted, altered state for a period of time now. And so let's, let's make sure that we're finding a way through this together. Lisa? If you think about those you know, resilient people in your life, or maybe you consider yourself a pretty resilient person. Um, some of those characteristics are listed up there in front of you. Um, and it doesn't, it, it's not the same for everybody. I will have to say that um, people who are resilient, they tend to meet the demands of their life successfully. Now, successfully is a little trick word, I think. Um, that's different for every single person. Um, for some people, that might be you are on top of everything. You're ahead of the game. You, you can get everywhere you need to go five minutes early. Sometimes it just means you're getting through and you're surviving and you are managing to, to get through and remain positive through all of the, 
things that life is, is sending your way. Um, so there's that positivity again, take positive action to deal with challenges. Um, we're all facing challenges every day, different ones that we never thought we would have to deal with. Um, so being positive in that, taking positive action, not kind of holding up and deciding, I'll just wait till somebody else pulls me out of this hole or um, wait for somebody else to, to give me an answer. It's really taking action and, and moving forward positively. Resilient people tend to seek support when needed. Um, they go out there and look for, um, you know, just opportunities to reach out to other people when they're, when they're in kind of a, a state of flux. Um, knowing when to take care of self. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, but knowing how to take care of yourself and when to take care of yourself. Knowing, um, I know, you know, we've, we've heard a lot about the valve. Um, and I, I kind of, when I saw this bullet, I, I thought about the valve, um, you know, and filling your bucket. You know, sometimes you got to open that valve up a lot when you're, when you're looking to take care of yourself. And sometimes you can dial it back a little bit, close it up a little bit, and just kind of, kind of smooth yourself, smooth yourself through. Um, resilient people tend to have a little bit of a higher sense of self-worth. And again, that's different for every single person. Every single person sees that in a different way. Um, and ultimately, it's that sense of purpose. Uh, Mel will mention later a, a quote from one of her faves um, about purpose and why it's so important to have a purpose. Um, it, it is important. You know, I don't think most people in this field are doing this for the money. You know, you're doing it because at the end of the day, you want to feel good about what you're doing. You want to help people live the life that they're meant to live. Um, and that's that purpose that helps you to be resilient, helps you to be flexible and, and not break when, when that wind is blowing. So some of those factors that build resilience, we're going to go through each of these. Um, and talk about all of them. And nothing I don't think is going to shock you here. I think you're going to be very familiar with a lot of these and a lot of the things that we talk about. It's nothing new, but it's a good reminder of um, how to build that resilience when you're feeling a little bit low. Um, we're going to talk about all the personal qualities that are developed with each factor too. So some of these that are, are listed up there, social engagement. What does that mean? Self-awareness, self-care. That's one of my favorites. Uh, attention and focus, that's hard to do when, when you've got a lot of competing priorities and you're suddenly not working in the same space anymore. Or you've got people all around you who need your attention. Um, finding meaning and then that growth mindset, that's the last one that we'll talk about today. So we're going to start with social engagement and certainly social engagement is not something that we can do in the same way that we traditionally have been, right? Um, social engagement is about that connecting with others, about joining a group. Virtual groups work too. They, they aren't quite as fun, but they do work. Um, volunteering, random acts of kindness. We can still drive through uh, McDonald's and pay for the person behind us. Uh, some of you might be part of the wine fairy delivery that's going on out there. Um, those types of things are fun and brighten someone's day. Being an active listener, being kind. Um, Certainly, you know, these are important all the time, but it seems like it's even more important to do these with intent now and be able to create that culture like that for the people on your work teams so that they are feeling this connection with each other and that they are feeling the, the random acts of kindness to kind of lift them up and put some air underneath them when they're, when they're starting to feel logy. Um, so, you know, I'd like everybody, because you guys, I'm sure you're rocking at this. And part of the benefit of doing these things are also learning from each other. So if there's things that you've been doing that you can share with others, please throw them up in the chat box so that other people can learn from you and, and how you've been able to connect your teams and, and lift them up. We're doing a superhero week next week um, with lots of different games and contests and, and trying to you know connect people that way and create a, a photo montage of of some of our DSPs. Uh, personally, my son has a birthday this weekend. I know there's been lots of birthday parades out there, but I'm actually surprising him with having some of his friends show up and sit in the back of their cars with their cars spaced apart from each other just so he can see them. You know, we, we take for granted sometimes how important that social connection is, especially for teenagers. My teenagers are craving their friends like crazy. So we wanted to try to find a safe way to bring that to him 
so that he could still experience a birthday and, and put a smile on his face. So please share the different ways that you're able to do this type of social engagement in kind of this new world so that other people can learn from you too. The importance of social engagement, of course, is that it will also build lots of different uh, qualities. And so it's going to build things like generosity and integrity, of course, integrity, doing the right thing when no one's looking. Those types of environments in which you're building social engagement is going to help with those things. It's going to help with authenticity and humility of people um, and helping them receive joys from others and, and, and delighting in other people's successes. We really got to see ourselves as being in this together uh, for us to get through. And the, the highlighted quote here, man having grace is so much greater than having perfection um i haven't always had grace on other people um i've i've been judgy and i've actually uh you know that's something that i personally have worked through and, and continue to work on and i find that when i'm in a state of grace it's much cooler than trying to strive for perfection and realizing that things are going to happen and people aren't going to be perfect and neither am i and that grace kind of is just enough to take the edge off and get you through sometimes. So these qualities, of course, are very important. I'm sure there's things that there that you'd like to see developed in, in your team and, and creating this culture uh, will help bring out some of those very qualities. So self-awareness and self-care obviously is, is super important. And I think I've attended more than a handful of webinars on that over the past couple of months, um, just to be able to support the people that I supervise um, and to support myself too, because sometimes we forget. Um, but self-awareness and self-care, it's really your ability to understand your own strengths, your own weaknesses, your own emotions, um, being able to support your emotional well-being, your physical well-being. So all of these things that are up on the list, you know, eating well, sleeping well, exercising, self-compassion, meditation, um, learning something new, all of those things, we know them. But sometimes it's difficult to step away and really be intentional about doing them. Um, you know, we all know how important it is to eat well, but we also know how good the Cheez-Its taste at 11 o'clock at night. Um, we all know how important it is to exercise, but you know we also know that, oh, that Netflix show, I can just watch three more episodes before I go to bed, and that going to bed ends up being 3 a.m. instead of you know, 9 o'clock. Um, so these things, it, it's really hard until you take that step and do them with intention. Um, something that Kurt had said that resonated with me a little bit, I, I love that engine light. Um, you know, and, and being able to make sure you don't drive around with the engine light on for too long because you have to um, check those things and make sure that everything is working well. The other thing, you've all heard this before, you get on a plane and what do they tell you? Put your oxygen mask on first before you're supporting somebody else or before you put somebody else's on next to you. That's a hard thing for, for people in our field to do because we're always supporting others first and we're always taught to take care of others' needs first. Um, but as a supervisor, you can't support someone else when your tank is empty um, and you can't support someone else when you're not supporting yourself. So practicing these habits or these practicing these will build lots of healthy habits. Um, you know, it takes time to build habits. It doesn't just, oh, I ran once today, so now I'll get out and do it again tomorrow. I still have a hard time with that and I've been running for a long time. Um, you know, cognitive reframing, that's a difficult one to do as well. Reframing your brain to just see positivity in things. Um, when you start to do that, you'll recognize when other people are not being positive. Um, it might be the little things. It may be, um, you know, or just kind of avoiding things or different events where you're not feeling good in a certain situation, but just kind of reframing your brain to find the positive in, in different things. Persistence and self-regulation. Again, that same thing, empty take, takes you nowhere. If that check engine light is on, eventually, everything's going to shut down and you're probably going to be left on a dirt road somewhere. <laughs> oh boy, attention and focus. Again, this comes back to what Teresa was just saying, just, you know, practicing some intention through all of this. One thing at a time, I don't know about you guys, but there are times, um, you know, certainly we need to stay connected to be educated on what's going on, but sometimes it all co also can be too much. And so making sure that when you're feeling 
um, like you're getting overwhelmed with some of what's going on in the world, it's okay to unplug. And sometimes that means unplugging from uh, social media, unplugging from uh, the TV and all of the news and all of the politics, um, but doing some, you know, avoiding that negativity and doing things with intention, um, focusing on one thing at a time. And like John uh, kind of led us through this morning, listen, just listen. No matter what it is that you're listening to, whether it's the birds, somebody said the birds are chirping louder. louder. I think they always chirp that way. We're just hearing it louder now, which is great. Um, but just listen to things and, and slow it down and make sure that you're modeling all of this. It's not just what you do for yourself, but if you're modeling it and you're encouraging in others, it's going to create that culture and foster that culture um, for the people that look to you as their leader and guide. So make sure that you're not only doing it and modeling it, but, but help others to do that too. Um, you know, that attention and focus build concentration um, on achievement. So sometimes, whether it be that, that exercise goal or whether it be something new we're trying to learn, that concentration and intent is going to help lead us to achievement. It's going to spark our curiosity. Sometimes when we're quiet, we actually think more about something. We wonder. We allow ourselves to wonder more in the time of silence. So the curiosity factor may actually be peaked now too, which is kind of cool. And of course, flexibility. We've all been extremely flexible during this. And, and that's a, a trait that I think is boding all of us well. If there's anything that we can say we got through this experience, it's to learn how to be flexible and learn that we can adjust on the go when need be. And, and it's okay. And it will be okay. So we have to remember that, you know, our energy goes where our intention flows. So if we place our intention somewhere, that's where our energy is going to go. And we have to make sure we're channeling that energy where we want it to go and not letting it mm, kind of seep out into those uh, bad and ugly places. Ah, meaning, meaning and purpose. So seeking your purpose. And, you know, for a long time, like <clears throat> many early young, young people, like, don't really consider myself young anymore. But when I was younger, you know, uh, like many other people, I was struggling with what am I supposed to be doing? What is my purpose? All of that. And my buddy, Joe Macbeth, uh, he told me, it was about 10 years ago at this point, he said to me that um, the purpose of life is to have a purpose. And I was like, oh, dude, that's heavy. But it really has um, helped ground me back to, um, you know, making sure that I focus on what my strengths are, what, what I can naturally bring, and not forcing myself into, uh, you know, that square, that square peg into a round hole and making sure that I'm finding what flows naturally for me because my strengths are going to lead to what my purpose is. I wasn't given these strengths out of the blue. Whatever my strengths are were given to me for a purpose, and if I align myself with my strengths, my purpose will naturally flow. And then continuing to develop those skills and goals within that area embracing change as it comes, reflecting, because sometimes, you know, we're not always, uh, we don't always proceed in the correct way. And sometimes we do have to step back and reflect um, on where we're going and, and did I take a, a wrong turn on that journey and, and should I need to backtrack and get back on the path of where I was headed. Um, you know, I, fortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have some mentors that also help keep me in check because sometimes I get these wild harebrained ideas of where I want to go and what I want to do and maybe I need to change up my purpose in life and I have those mentors that say yeah okay and they allow me to speak for a little while and then they basically put me back in check and remind me um, of my of my purpose and my inner core of, of what I'm looking to do so be that person for someone else Make sure that you're allowing people to dream, but at the same time, help them drive from their purpose, help them seek their core and help them find their strengths because that exploration is going to help them strive for uh, and align themselves more with the goals that they have in mind and what, what their ultimate purpose is. That, um, you know, that seeking meaning, that builds that sense of self-acceptance, you know, self-actualization on the top of Maslow's Pyramid ding, 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 here it is. Um, that, that seeking that meaning is going to help you reach that point of like, oh, it's where I want to be. It's going to help find the gratitude. You're not going to feel that miserable sense if you're aligned with your purpose. You're going to feel good about things. You're going to have hope and feel optimism. This Maya Angela quote, there is no greater agony than bearing the untold story inside you. 
we all carry a beautiful story. We just have to make sure that we unlock it and share it with others. And what, what is our purpose and what is the story that we're meant to tell? If, it's, if you need to do that, please do so, but please help open the door for other people to find that too. You are a lot more um, influential to the people on your teams than what you think you are. Um, sometimes we, we forget that we're on stage and we're somebody that the, the staff that work with us kind of look up to. And we have to remember um, that we own that role and, and help guide others um, in that journey of uh, exploration and discovery too. So be that person. Ah, uh, the growth mindset. So my good friend Mel once talked well several times, has talked about her little bubbling pool analogy. And I, I got the slide to talk about this one. So I get to share her, her little glory for a few minutes here. Um, you know, we're, most people are not a big fan of stagnation. You know, a lot of people really just like that, that ability to just keep moving forward constantly. And that's, that's what this growth mindset's all about. So you think about stagnation and, you know, that, that word in itself kind of gives me a little bit of a shiver, but, you know, think about that swampy pond, then nobody goes in and you've got that thin layer of sludge on top and it's a little stinky you know you go walking by and you're glad you have a mask on that day because it smells so bad um, but then you think about those ponds where they put the little bubbler in there you know it starts bubbling it doesn't smell everything stays fresh the fish are in there you can see to the bottom um, you know that's a big thing you know making sure that, that your pond doesn't stay stagnant um, you want to make sure you have that bubbler in there that that constant growth mentality um, when you're when you keep your mind set on something and you don't open it to different challenges, different ideas, then you can't move forward. Um, but it's also remembering all the things that are listed there that that achievement that you're working towards that requires work. I don't know too many things that that I've accomplished in life that haven't really taken a whole heck of a lot of hard work. Um, you don't get a degree by just sitting down in a classroom and you know, walking in and out every day. You have to do the work that comes along with it. You know, you, you work hard to um, create goals for yourself and, and achieve those goals. One of the most important things that, you know, I want you to recognize is that you can't compare yourself to others. You know, comparing yourself to another supervisor or um, to someone else, you know, it's one thing to seek out a mentor that you, you want to emulate, you want to be like, but don't compare yourself to others. You know, we're all different. We're all on a different path. Um, we're all on a different road. And, and those roads look different from time to time. Sometimes that road has got a lot of potholes, but you know what, it's your road. Embrace that road. Um, you know, hit, pedal to the metal and, and hit a pothole, who knows what'll happen. Um, you know, other people's roads are a lot smoother. So it's just really important that you, you do you. You know, that's another melism. You know, I have a lot of it. <laughs> You do you. <laughs> uh, it's important to pl applaud the effort too. You know, when you think about your employees, sometimes just the end of the day, they just want to be applauded. You know, hopefully you saw that fabulous regional centers um, post with, with everybody applauding direct support and that the work that they're doing, it's really important to do just little things like that. You don't just walk around and clap, walk around and say thank you. Um, those things are important. But also, again, focusing on you and the, the feelings that you're getting from that. Um, you know, and honestly, thinking about failure for yourself has got to be different. Um, you know, you really, you create your own road, you create your own path. The quote that's on there, you know, it's up to you to be the navigator. Time flies. So, you know, make sure that you're using every moment, um, that you're, you're taking in every moment, you're sharing every story with everyone. Um, and, and also remember from all the way back at the beginning, another thing that resonated with me with John was him saying, you know, it's okay to be okay. You know, don't feel bad that, you know, you're getting up and you're going to work and it's all okay. You know what? You're not, again, hiding in that hole. You're doing all right. It's okay to feel that way. Um, remember that and, and remember that wonder and curiosity and how that feels for you. Um, you know, that's just a great way to kind of continue that growth mentality for yourself. Oh, are we going to fight over this one? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. All right. Bye.
bottom line is folks make it happen. You know, if the journey doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. Uh, these are really strange times we're living in. Um, but we have to remember that we, it can be empowering to take control over things that you can. Um, some things are beyond our control right now, but the things that you can control, do so and, and realize that you have control over that. Um, and there's power in that. So, you know, embrace those moments. The way you spend your time or inspire others to spend theirs has an incredible impact. Again, like I mentioned before, you, you are influential to the people um, that look up to you. And don't be afraid of the struggles. Uh, find growth in them as they are also part of the journey. Bottom line, folks, and really to wrap this up, we just want you to be well. Stay well, be well. People need you. We need you. Um, and so take care of yourselves and, and make sure that you're taking care of the people on your team so that we can continue to, to do the awesome work that we're doing. And we just want to take a moment to applaud you guys, um, really, for all of that you're doing and staying strong through all of this. We really appreciate you. So just as a reminder, um, you can find us on WorkforceTransformation.org. We are going to be start to offer a lot of virtual sessions. Um, we did a check-in yesterday and learned that people would like us to do some of our sessions remotely. And so we're going to start doing those. So make sure to check out the website there to be able to capture and sign up for uh, sessions in all the different regions of the state. Because virtually now, it doesn't really matter because you're not traveling. You can attend anybody's stuff. So check out the website and check out the calendar. And there's our uh, email addresses if you want to connect with us. Thanks so much for spending your time with us today.